And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a game called Steam Park, which is a clever mixture of steampunk and theme park. Or, or not, but still, Steam Park is about building an amusement park and the Steam Age, whatever, I don't care so much about that. Apparently you have robots coming in your park and they like to go on rides and they like to ride rides forever or something like that. But the game lets you build your own theme park. And that's a theme that I'm really attracted to. I love Roller Coaster Tycoon series on the video games. I like the idea of building a theme park and it's very, very, very underrepresented in the board gaming world. I live hours from Orlando. I love going to theme parks, so I was very excited. Hopefully this game wouldn't let me down. It's from Cranio Creations and Yellow, both companies which I like a lot. So let's take a look. It may seem like there's a lot of pieces for this game, but there really isn't. You have different rides, there's six different colors. So you have this blue, really cool steam park slide. Uh, you know, this one here looks like it spins you in circles. There's green, all oh, the pink castle. And then we have the, the red roller coaster. And then purple is some mad teacup ride. And then black looks like a haunted house. And for each, there's six different color rides. And for each color ride, you have a size three. You have a size two, and you have a size one. So there's 18 rides that can be built over the course of a theme park. There's also other smaller things that you can build uh, in your theme park from little attractions, uh, basically toilets, casinos, security, promotions, and information stands. Now the game is gonna revolve around dice. So each player is gonna take a number of dice and the game will begin. Somebody will say go, and on my turn, I'm gonna roll these six dice and each die has five sides that are useful and two blank dice. Now, if I find something I like, like, ooh, I want to keep that die, I'll put that die there, and I'll say, uh, I'll keep one of those, and the rest I can re-roll. Now, everyone's doing this at the same time. Now, once you put a die there, that die is there forever. So I say, um, nah, and I keep re-rolling. And you can keep re-rolling and keep re-rolling and keep re-rolling, but there's going to come up a point where you're going to uh, basically... Uh, finish and once you finish then you're going to reach in the middle and you're going to grab the first one of these that's available if that's already been grabbed you grab the second one if that, that one then the third one and then you're stuck with the fourth one in fact when the first ones are taken when all the first three are taken by the way it's a four player game and a two player game there'd only be two and then a three player game there'd only be three etc but when you're the last person once the other three people have taken them you only have two more re-rolls you can't just then basically just pick your dice up and put them on the side you want. You only have two more re-rolls. And then, in player order, one, two, three, four, depending on the tiles you've taken, players will take turns. First, all the players are going to get dirt. You'll look and you'll see these little round tokens, little round symbols on five of these dice. That means I'm going to get five dirt tokens. The more work you put into your park, the more dirt tokens you are going to take. Dirt tokens are a bad thing. You do not want them. Also, the player who has taken number one can at this point get rid of four dirt tokens. The player who's taken number two can get rid of two dirt tokens. And the person who has taken number four gets two extra dirt tokens. Players will also get one dirt token for every person that they have in their amusement park because we know that people stir up a lot of dirt. Now when spending dice, you will be doing that during the action phase, spending dice to take actions. You can spend any dice that has a side on it to add an extra section to your park. Your park is a 4x4 but as time goes by you will be able to expand it and add more to it if you so desire. And any die can do that. You can use dies with these building tools on them to build rides in your park. Now I have two of them here, so that allows me to build a ride that's size two. So I can pick any of the available ones and place it in my park. Now I can build as many rides as I can afford, except you can't build multiple rides of the same size. So I couldn't build two number one rides with those two. I could build one number one ride or one number two. If I had four, I could build a one and a three or just a three, etc. Now when you build this ride, you can put anywhere you want in your park. However, rides can never be next to each other, even diagonally. People need to move around the park. So if I bought a number two pink ride later on, I could put it here and here, 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 like that, but I couldn't put it there. 
The only exception is if you buy a ride in the same color, like this one blue ride, it must go adjacent to a, another ride in the park. For each sh shovel symbol, you get to get rid of two dirt tokens from your park. So you, this is really the only way to get rid of dirt tokens and you want to get rid of them. So these are an easy way to get rid of dirt tokens. If you roll a stand here, you can add one of the special buildings to your park. You have a security uh, building and each of these buildings gives you a special abilities. Security buildings let you redraw visitors. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but there's different things like, for example, this casino lets me change a die that's on my pig to any one I want. Toilets let me get double my getting rid of the dirt. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with each of these buildings. And these buildings will follow the same rules. So when I put them on a spot, it has to be, again, where people can walk through it. So you can see that you're gonna run out of room very soon on this one, but fortunately, like I said, you can add more room in. Now, of course, you wanna attract people to your park, and for that, you will use the dice that show people on them. Uh, for each person die that you've rolled, you will pick any color you want from the available ones that are next to the board, and you'll throw them in the bag. And I'll look for the rides. I have a blue ride, a purple ride, and a red ride. Let's say I did two people. I'll throw a red and a purple into the bag. Now at the beginning of the bag, the, the bag already comes seated with one of each color and that will change. And so I, I put two people in, then I randomly draw two people out. So I look and I got a blue and a purple. Great. I could put the blue here on this bl blue ride. It has space for three people. And I can put the purple on the purple ride because that has space for two people. If I draw a color where I have no space for it or a color I don't have, that is taken out of the bag and put in the general supply. Uh, but it doesn't help me out at all. So there's a, obviously not going to be good for me when I draw the colors that I don't want. However, many of those special buildings allow you to draw extra people or to use these people maybe for one round, even if they're not the matching color. Players are going to start with three goal cards at the beginning of the round. And every time you play one of these, you have a chance to play one of the goal cards from your hand. So you play that card and I mean, it shows you on the card itself, so you can't forget what that does. But you play the card and then you get money, which by the way, there's all sorts of denominations of money and it's all on the back is this looks the same so you can keep the amount of money that you have hidden based on what that card does. So this says the number of additional grounds in your park. So however many of these I have in my park, if I had none, I still get a buck. If I have four of them though, or more, I will get eight denarii. Uh, this one here, the number of pink spaces in your park from my rides, or the number of shovels that I've rolled this turn, or the number of purple visitors in my park, or the number of, you know, tools that I rolled this turn, or the number of rides that are completely full. So you'll get these, and then when you play one, you get to draw another one. So these are very useful, and they will give you points as the game goes by, because this denarii money is points. After everyone has taken their actions, each player is going to get three denarii for each visitor that they have in their park. So that's an important thing to make sure that those go in there. And then you go to the next round where you roll the dice. After the sixth turn, the game ends. Then you check your dirt. Players will likely have some dirt at the end of the game, hopefully not. Because, but the amount of dirt that you have is going to influence how many denarii you have to pay. In fact, if you have 30 or more dirt in your park at the end of the game, which is very possible, you will automatically lose. And even if you have between 25 and 29, you lose 55 denarii, which is essentially akin to losing. So you're going to check this, subtract that much denarii, and then everybody compares how much denarii they have, how many points they have, and whoever has the most is the winner. Fan! Fantastic! I was so glad because I would have nailed this game to the wall had it not been good because I love theme parks and you don't mess up a good theme, but this did it well. There's a lot to like about this game. Some people be like, oh, I don't want to play a game where I'm speedily rolling dice. Yeah, you are, but it's not like super pressure. It's not like someone who's really fast will win. No, it's just that if someone rolls a little bit faster, maybe gets the dice that they want. And sometimes you will take fewer dice than you want just to go first to get rid of some dirt. But the person who goes last will be able to do tons of stuff, but you know, that dirt counts. In fact, let's talk about that. That dirt is like this cloud hanging over you the whole game. Like, oh, I gotta get rid of my dirt. And you can say, well, you know what? I'm gonna take more dirt because getting rid of dirt will take actions and I'm gonna build this huge amusement park with lots of fun. And that is a very possibility. And the game is pretty cool balancing that way. 
the dice itself, the different the, the pulling visitors from the bag. Some people won't like that. They're like, ah, random. But you can throw in the colors and hopefully the numbers will be there. And if you diversify and have a lot of rides of different colors, it doesn't matter what you pull from the bag as much. And I love that feature of the game. I love the different actions you can take. I love the bonus cards. That is a great mechanism for this game. The bonus cards, because you play them and you can use dice to play bonus, you can play bonus card around, multiple bonus cards around and get income, but the more of them you play, obviously, the less you're doing. You're too busy on the, the circuit getting awards to actually make your park better. And the, the, the park looks cool. I mean, this game has a super cool visual effect with these three-dimensional rides and you're pulling the people from the back. It just looks great. This is a game that, you know, I don't know if it's out in Germany or not, but this is a game that I would say would be in a very front-running position for the Spiel des Jahres. This is the perfect family game. This is fantastic. It plays very differently, mind you, from with two players, because with two players, there's a lot more rides available. With four, the rides go fast. I, I think in most four-player games, almost all the rides will be gone by the end of the game, or even very early on, but I don't think that's a big deal. I'm telling you, this game just makes me happy because it allows you to build an amusement park. It allows you to have these different special kiosks and things that give you special abilities. And, oh, I can draw two visitors from the bag instead of one. Or I can get rid of double dirt. Ha ha. And you can go for the super sque squeaky clean park or the park. Yeah, we're dirty, but we have lots of rides. So, yes, obviously the theme is something that attracted me to this, but... I think the theme fits well. I also think it plays quickly. We're talking 45 minutes to an hour. And that's a great play time for this. My only complaint would be like, oh, only four players. Now, I would have loved to play this with five or even six, but that doesn't matter. A super great game, one I highly recommend, one definitely going into my collection, Steam Park. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.